Yeah, that's what you want. Watch, watch him really. Okay, that's not helpful. <coughs> okay. Apologize for the delay here. We're just getting to. You know, I haven't had something this slow since I was at a conference and everyone was running Second Life. You know. Let's see here. Um, and then we go to. Um, I see running slow on the phone there. Hold on, it's right here. Portal. Uh, uh, okay. All right. Okay. Hi there. Uh, once again, my apologies there for um, time there. 
So, so if you need to close that door back there to distract it, you can do that. Um. Uh, so, <clears throat> my name is Jeff Kane, and um, I'm uh, I work um, as a uh, technology um, education technology specialist at the Washington State Board for Community Technical Colleges. Um, I have a background in teaching, but also in uh, instructional design, um, and I also have a uh, education consulting uh, business. Um, and uh, I had uh, uh, work a lot in professional development. So that's kind of what we're doing at uh, the state board is uh, looking at uh, ways to um, ways to bring our uh, professional development uh, into uh, uh, throughout the system in uh, some new ways. Um, so uh, since this uh, room is uh, small enough, I think it would really help us out to know uh, who's in the room. Um, and if uh, anyone here is currently using badges or if uh, uh, you've earned a badge, right? So sometimes you, you may have, uh, you, you may not have um, issued a badge, but uh, we have, um, uh, you may have um, actually uh, been uh, uh, earned one. Uh, let's see. So if we can start up, just uh, uh, we'll start up right here. <laughs> there you yeah. go. Yeah. Uh, My name is Anthony Sam. I work at Boise University. Uh, campus center. I'm a instructional designer. And I'm a professional student. Is that what you asked for? Yeah, or, or did you, any experience with badges at all? It does say badges for beginners, um, but sometimes they get people that... I can pick on later. So. No, I, I really like learning a little bit about how people do stuff, and I think you for this year. I want to learn more about that and how it can make your competency based education. Okay. I'm Eric, and I'm from Community College in Washington, and I'm one of the United States Health Specialists, and we have sort of used that. Okay, great. Okay. I, I was an instructional designer there about 10 years ago, and I used to work with Christopher Soren. Yeah. <laughs> all right, welcome. Zip Cole, uh, Columbia Gorge Community College instructor. I, two years ago, I used badges in all my classes, and I stopped because I didn't see any result from it. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Um, Michael Murphy, um, director of the Learning Academic Technology at Central Oregon Community College. No experience with that. Okay. I'm Bruce Kaus. I'm the director of being learning at Blue Mountain Community College. Um, we looked at badges. Uh, we're starting a new student orientation course. Uh, I obviously have badger installed, and we're going to play with that to see if that would work. But basically, that's, that's the extent that I have. But really trying to get it towards the students to meet goals. Right. So that works. Okay. Randy Stamp from ISU, Iowa State. Um, we, we use badges for professional development too um, for some of the courses that we have in house mm -hmm. for our faculty. And, and, uh, most of them at first don't realize that they, it's something they want, and then when they get it, they want it. Right. And they're excited about it. So. Okay. So we've got two levels of motivation in the room here, so that's, that's interesting. Um, uh, interesting piece to have to go and, uh, My name is Matias Solsat. I'm the new learning coordinator at Big Ben Community College. And I know nothing about that. Okay. All right, Dan Wells, uh, instructor for Portland Community College. Uh, your applications. And, uh, we want to do batches and have experience here. Okay. Hey, I'm Kristen Palmer. I'm 
super glad to be here last minute. We have um, we have various levels of badging at our university. We have um, our board, and sometimes our administration goes through their readiness. And so we have Coursera for partners, and we do certificates for crew readiness, like agile software design and practice management. Um, that we go back and forth on badging. So I'm often asked. I just wanted to be I am a librarian and sometimes English at just a Columbia Asian college in the same city as Washington. Um, I don't get fear of badging, but I'm really interested in this possible application for teaching um, students research skills and motivating them to get deeper into research. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah, and so it tells me a little bit about where uh, where we need to be. Um, so we've we've seen badges in uh, uh, around in our uh, everyday life, um, and some of them are quite trivial. You know, there's like there's badges you can get for shopping at IKEA, um, and but then we have um, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, military, um, and the badges are imbued with the significance of the culture that creates them in that case. Um, so badges are a digital, a digital badge is then a digital representation of a learning achievement or experience. And it's a concrete evidence of uh, and proof of skills and achievements, a more complete re representation of an individual's learning. Um, an open badge, very much like uh, open software, is a public technical specification. Uh, it provides a common uh, language for um, achievements, uh, and it's portable to any system that owners wish to use. So that's a really important piece about badges. If um, uh, you're using them on an informal basis, it uh, you know, your students are always on time and they get the clock badge, right? Um, that would be fairly informal, but um, the idea of an open badge is a lot like open software because we want to make sure that we've got processes in place to where when somebody uses a certain kinds of technical language around badges, um, you know, what, is, what, what does an issuer mean? Uh, you know, who can be an issuer? How do we... Uh, determine the credibility of a badge. All of that language has to be built into this, um, or it's going to quickly fall apart. Um, so, in, in the inside of a badge, and it's more like uh, we have the image, but the data behind it uh, includes things like uh, the name of the badge, um, the uh, issuer, that's who's giving the badge out, who's receiving it. Um, and important things like uh, what evidence uh, the person might have that they've um, uh, achieved that uh, skill, uh, the endorsement, uh, and uh, things like the uh, alignment to standards. Um, often you'll see that programs created in the same way that, uh, in the same way that um, courses or programs are developed, where we're talking about the outcomes. And so uh, when uh, we look at the individual outcomes for particular uh, programs, uh, you can identify milestones for those students uh, that you may want to acknowledge. Uh, so the core components are of a, uh, of a digital badge are, of course, the recipient, um, the issuer, and the badges uh, criteria and description. Uh, all that information um, needs to help us understand the validity and the authenticity of the badge. Uh, just looking at some examples, um, this is from Penn State, um, and this uh, this is a terrible illustration at this resolution, um, but this is from their uh, it was from their libraries. And um, like, for instance, uh, this is uh, uh, 
um, this badge here is uh, citations, right? So it's that research piece. Um, and they issue badges for certain skills, and then you get a meta badge, um, and that's a, uh, that is, <coughs> That is a criticizer uh, of information, questioning of information, savvy uh, searching. Savvy searching is this badge over here. Uh, so searching by keywords, doing these different skills makes you a savvy searcher. When you get all three of these badges, you have the uh, Uber badge. And that uh, uh, lets um, a faculty member know, for instance, that um, if they look at a student's profile in a learning management system and they see badges like this, uh, what they're really uh, looking at is uh, what can they expect from that student? You know, does the student know how to cite information properly? Um, and, and it will help that faculty member say, oh, I looked at your profile, you haven't done half of this, you really need to go back to the library and uh, talk to them about some of their skills classes. Um, so other, uh, other examples um, include, I'm afraid to click on anything today but after um, how long it took us to get off the ground. Um, but I'll be bold, that's it. So the previous example, yeah. the badges were just a quick look, quick Something for me to quickly see if they've met certain achievements. Right. Okay. Exactly. And um, okay, so that, that that we actually got somewhere there. Um, so in uh, uh, this science class, they have um, each one of the um, uh, each one of the classes in this uh, series has a badge associated with it, and this is a high school high school class. Um, there's a 21st century skills and ed design lab, um, which this is a PDF, so this should be, I think it's been downloaded before. This, um, this gives you, uh, on uh, 21st century skills badges, have initiative, collaboration, um, and uh, it gives the uh, description of, uh, of what um, is expected of, of the student um, for, that, uh, for that badge. Let's see if I go back um, to let's see here. Badge examples, okay. There we go. Uh, Microsoft Technology Associates is a uh, is also a, um, a an issuer of badges, and uh, uh, here's where things really start getting interesting about badges. Um, what uh, what ha what's happening in the technical realm is that these badges are uh, are accepted. Uh, because if you have a badge that says, oh, I know how to, uh, for instance, um, let's see, here's a coding certification badge. Um, here's a badge of, you know, programming using JavaScript. Um, let's see, HTML5 application development fundamentals. In the workplace, they'll quickly figure out whether you know how to do that or not. Um, and or they'll see the badge and they'll say, hey, we saw these badges on your profile. Send us uh, a portfolio of your work or uh, send us some code from GitHub that you have last worked on or are proud of. And uh, these, codings, um, these coding certification badges are recognized as cert certificates. Now, that's not to say, though, that every badge badging effort um, has that kind, that level. I mean, because uh, one of the things that that people do with badges, and you'll see this in K through 12 and a lot, um, and in uh, uh, the community colleges, 
uh, where motivation is an issue, right, for the students. And uh, badges are often used in the gamification of, of uh, courses, right? So it's, um, they sort of take the emphasis off the grade, put the emphasis on the skills they want the, the student to learn, and then um, the badges, although they become kind of a um, uh, something uh, fun, is still something that the students um, aren't interested in doing. Um, an example of this, I mean, a very analog example of this, not a digital badge, uh, but my wife is an English teacher. And uh, when she uh, grades, um, when she finishes grading something, she might put in a B stamp at the, at the bottom and it reminds her that uh, she's read everything and she just thinks it's a fun way to communicate. And uh, she's got a couple of different stamps that she uses. And then one time she passed back the um, middle of the quarter, she passes back the papers and it doesn't have the stamp on it. And a handful of students all went up to her and said, hey, where's my stamp? You know, um, but it becomes a, a sign for that student uh, of their own accomplishment. Um, hello. My clicker stuck. Oops. Did I tell you I was an uh, education technology specialist? <laughs> Now, when you guys do the evaluations for this session, the internet's going to work perfectly. I just know it. <laughs> um, so, uh, but let's talk about that. Let's talk about, this was something that we really had to um, think carefully about when, um, in our work at the state board, um, you know, we have no interest in uh, telling the schools how to do this uh, badging uh, effort. Um, we want to provide tools for faculty. We want to provide um, some expertise. Um, and um, we want to provide some research behind the, this work. And uh, so we developed this um, uh, taxonomy of badges that um, uh, talks about the classification, the activity, you know, what kind of badge was it, the activity uh, that the students um, or person, you know, you know, person might do uh, how it was assessed, and uh, an example of the badge. And so these are just some quick badges that we put together. Um, if uh, if you uh, take a look, like for instance, um, with something like um, with something like the uh, the activity is attending a presentation. Um, there's little or no um, assessment on that. Uh, it might just be uh, attendance and motivation. And so we issue a, 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 a participation badge. And so we're sort of color coding these, uh, these skills. When um, the skills become a little bit more difficult, you know, they're completing an assignment or a quiz, or uh, demonstrating or applying a skill, uh, and uh, demonstrating knowledge and skill in a realistic context. So then those badges become, uh, um, you know, become a little more, um, uh, you know, a little more complex, right? Uh, this um, taxonomy, how it works with an individual, right? So uh, somebody may um, attend a conference and they get a participation badge. Um, but if they're just uh, demonstrating knowledge, they may uh, get a knowledge badge. Uh, if they uh, perform or create an artifact that might be a skill badge, and then we could also um, issue badges that are composite badges of two or more badges earned. And that's like the meta badge that we saw in Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm sorry, Penn State, yeah. Uh, so, um, so what we decided to do is um, 
we had to, we felt like we had to get um, more experience with badges, and we used uh, Canvas as um, our LMS. And at the a uh, couple of years ago, um, we decided to, to go with Badger because that was at that time the, the uh, one that Instructure was working with on integrating badges into the uh, LMS. Um, so we use, we're using Badger.io uh, and Canvas together for our badging program. Um, what's uh, in the state of Washington, we do this quite often, is that we'll, we'll uh, negotiate statewide licenses for these tools. And uh, we're covering the cost of Badger uh, at the state level. And so when a, a faculty member um, logs into Canvas and they open up a course, and then they uh, look at, uh, uh, then they uh, click on, on badges, uh, it sends a uh, ping over to the Badger server uh, to let the, and then they let the faculty member know that they have access to a Badger Pro account, which gives them more, more tools in there. Um, so one of the things that we found was um, with professional development uh, throughout the state, uh, you know, like for instance, we'll have accessibility training. And what happens typically at the end of accessibility training is uh, the person delivering the training fills out a form, say, you know, or checks off a form, uh, fills out a spreadsheet saying this person has the accessibility training. Uh, it gets put in, you know, locked up in a server somewhere, and that's pretty much the end of the story. And what we've done is uh, for certain kinds of training, we've you know, we've checked off a legal checkbox for us, or we've checked off a policy checkbox, right? That we want people to know, know this. And so uh, we're missing out, you know? We're, we're missing out because uh, we have an opportunity to uh, help um, people understand, um, you know, to help the faculty be able to communicate to other people uh, the skills that they've gotten through this professional development. Um, so <coughs> that's, uh, it allows uh, recognition for professional development both inside and outside of official channels. Because if, you, if we award you a badge, um, you can, it not just shows up in Canvas, but you can share that badge in uh, LinkedIn or um, on your website, uh, uh, different places. Um, the, um, this was our charge, was to uh, uh, develop and implement a set of open badge <coughs> digital credentials that can be earned by participants in formal and informal professional development, uh, and that can be owned and shared, if desired, by those that earn the badge. So that was um, our, our boss handed down that edict. Um, and there's plenty of um, organizations that are, um, that are using um, using uh, digital badges for professional development. Um, and uh, Kent State, uh, I've got a couple examples uh, there. Uh, Penn State with di digital badges. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, Brigham Young has uh, a badge school for pre-service teachers. Now, um, there's some, uh, some of these uh, badging efforts um, I see a lot going on right now in uh, education programs as well. So uh, somebody who's going for an instructional de design certificate, um, there's a, a list of skills that instructional designers learn. Uh, but the problem is um, it's hard to know when somebody comes to you and says, I'm an instructional designer, uh, and you want to know, okay, uh, does this mean uh, you know how to edit video and, and do graphic design or just what exactly did you do to become an instructional designer. There's a lot of definitions for that. So the badging is a, an answer to that. Now what I'm going to do is, um, let's see, we, have, we still, I, <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and just take 
um, a look at Kent State's example. Kent State is one of the reasons why I included this is because they're using Credly and um, I need to take a closer look at Credly because they're also um, going to be working with Instructure to, uh, to put that in. Uh, Credly is, an, is another platform. Hello. And we've got a webinar coming up too on that. Uh, so they're using um, they're using uh, uh, these badges um, to oh yes uh, this was this was a weird thing about Kent State and I have questions about this about why um, somebody has um, so Matthew um, Matthew here um, has been issued the uh, this badge. And when you click on the badge, we've got the title, Issuer's Kent State. Um, we have the description of what this person did. And the first, first time I looked at this, I almost uh, choked because it just seemed like, um, you know, the, uh, I used to work in the K-12 through system years ago, and it just felt like, uh, oh, FERPA violation right immediately, you know. But... Uh, uh, what happens is when you earn a badge from Credly, you can decide whether you want to make it public or not, um, and even where you want to make it public. So, uh, so there's that. Okay. Can you, uh, oh, go ahead. Do they have share settings? Do you can share like, just with employers or something like that? That would make them public. Well, one thing that you could do is you can send a uh, you can send a URL to an, an employer. Um, and saying uh, this here's here's the uh, the badge that I earned in this skill. Um, let's see here. I'm just going to go. Okay. How, how could that possibly? Okay. Hello. <coughs> You know what was fascinating about this is that we were right there, Kent State. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's um, uh, when you have a badge, you can, um, for instance, I will, uh, let's, let's take a look at that very quickly here. Um, and I go, let's see if there's, okay. So I've logged in, oops, that's backpack. Okay, hold on. Okay. So I've logged into um, my um, backpack, right? Um, what that means is, um, uh, for instance, um, if I have, a, um, I have a uh, um, an issuer, right? Let's say state of Washington uh, creates um, a class, and the and the class has these skills, that, and I've been awarded that badge to um, uh, that I've been awarded that badge, and then I'm storing them in a host. Um, and that host uh, right now is Canvas and uh, Badger.io, and then I can display this to um, to other people. And the um, what we use in on Badger, it's the uh, backpack. So if you were familiar with Mozilla, the Mozilla backpack moved to um, Mozilla backpack moved to Concentric Sky. Um, I didn't like that idea because uh, Mozilla is an open company and Concentric Sky uh, is commercial, but um, they're keeping uh, a lot of these tools open, which is, uh, which is a good thing, uh, which means there's no cost to us. Okay. So, um, I, as a matter of fact, um, learning how to use Badger, um, I took their 
uh, I took their course. And uh, it, this badge tells, um, uh, tells my boss that I have successfully completed the online Badger course. And there doesn't seem to be much information uh, needed to do that. It's a very simple course. When I click on share a badge, um, I can uh, uh, include the recipient and identifier. That's my email. And um, I can copy that link and share that. Um, I can also um, put it on uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or or Pinterest. And then um, also we have uh, an uh, email. And so if I go to, um, if I'm using uh, a blog, I can take that code and put it into like a WordPress blog and display my badges at my blog. I have some badges at, um, I have some badges at, uh, jeffkane.com on the sidebar there. Uh, some of them are real. There's one or two that um, some friends awarded me just to be funny. Uh, so some of our some of the work that we're doing, we have um, uh, our accessibility. Um, we 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 developed. Uh, we have a. Um, Jess Thompson developed a uh, accessibility course in our uh, department, and uh, we have uh, badges that uh, that go with that. Um, let's see. I also had um, a badge um, that was a uh, motivation badge from GBC Education Consulting. Be me, and this is more of this uh, informal. Um, uh, informal pieces that belong to uh, a larger project. Yeah, go ahead. So badges for courses, let's say course, and for to recognize students as they reach certain accomplishments or return. Okay, so there, Moodle has badges built in. Okay, I just have to create the image and you know, all the information for it. Uh, where, where do you, for your, for the schools in your state, where do those badges go for students? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they, I guess they're getting it to an email or something, right? Hey, congratulations, you got it. <coughs> but what yeah. does it go so that it's part of the record? Right. So in a, um, in a Canvas course, there's, uh, there's a uh, link in the navigation bar to, um, to, uh, Badger.io, and it shows up in a window in Canvas. The students' badges and the badges that are available in that course. Now, where you get the record is um, badges are most often connected with the completion of a module in in Canvas, and uh, you may say, um, and the completion of the module might be the um, student uh, views everything in the module and then passes a test with a score of 75% or better, right? Those are particular. And so at that point, when the student meets the requirements of that module, then the student is awarded a batch. So that's all just internal to that course. Do they, do they also get attached to the student file or student record somehow so that other instructors see it? Or? Well, it, it, it becomes attached to the student's profile in, in the learning management the system. Yeah. Yeah. Which would go to any class using that element. Right. I guess what I'm thinking, like, when you're talking about like, the boys thing is, as soon as they get, like, service learning credit, it will show up on a transcript next to the course and identify that they got a service learning credit for Right. So that kind of way you're getting at it. Mm -hmm. a transcript. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can see that just for just within the course. Mm -hmm. But I can also, also see somebody who went, I don't know, up from my head, you know, above and beyond. I thought, I don't just want to stick to the student. Yeah, well, I want everybody else to know about this. Yeah. So I just kind of understand the difference and where they go. Yeah. Um, let's see. If I can get into um, a quick uh, 
Let's see. Um, There's a lot of research in gamification of online learning. That's how you find it. So if you um, look up uh, gamification, um, e-learning, um, motivation, you'll find articles about badges. So there is a lot of research that supports this. Um, the, uh, let's see, if, um, let's see, I'm not, as a faculty member, so everybody will see that badges link right there, and that um, badger loads in the course. And it gives you a list of all the badges that are available in this course. Like this one is a digital citizenship course. And um, what, you know, it includes things like copyright, cyberbullying, internet safety, information literacy. And then the meta badge for this course is the digital citizenship badge. What course is this? This is uh, this is uh, one of my own courses called digital citizenship. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it was uh, and the target was uh, ABE students um, learning how to uh, be on the internet. You know. Yeah. So if you want to have these meta badges in your course, is there someone on your that you would suggest? Central person that verifies or validates or proves that you played this into your course, and is someone else extracting that in order to get a Uber badge? Yeah. How they how they know they got that from several different courses across campus? For example, how are you tracking that? Well, there's uh, so there's a couple of pieces there. Okay, in this question, um, the one is um, is where we're doing is we're putting into into our own professional development. There's a, there's a number of faculty in the state of Washington who are using them in the way that I would use them. This is not an official, uh, you know, the school does not officially recognize this, right? Um, and uh, that'd be a long day at the curriculum committee, you know, to uh, go through that research, you know, and, and it should be done. Uh, but... Um, the work that I'm doing now is I'm doing um, demonstrations of these ideas and then uh, talk to the faculty and the um, administrators about how they can use, use these tools. And we have, uh, you know, most often in workforce education is a, you know, is a big part of that. Um, if I go back to, um, my backpack. One of those, uh, one of those pieces in here. Let's see. Is uh, why are you doing that? Come on. Um, is is what they call pathways. And what 
the um, problem that this solves is like I have badges that I've created that need to go into multiple courses, right? And then I want them, but I also want the students to be awarded a different meta badge at the end of going through that, um, going through those pathways. So like for instance, my student success course takes um, two, ba two badges from my digital citizenship course, and then I have um, a student skills um, course. And, um, but then what, so, and then what I want, and then the badge is the student success badge. So you have, um, you know, how to be a successful online student is, is this course. This one um, has things that these students need to know. And once they're, um, uh, once they complete that, then um, they get the student success badge. Uh, and then I would hope that um, that a um, I mean eventually there you know uh, we're going to have um, badges recognized and, and things as it's like we have deans asking about like I said workforce education. Um, let's see. Any more questions? Can I follow up on that? Yes, please. So, Well, yeah. You, um, so there are some. Uh, I would. So what we're what uh, um, you could build. This is this is called a pathway, and you could build a pathway with that. And one of the importance of the open badge standard is that um, we should be able to be. Oh, I, I should be able to be awarded a, a badge at a community college and when I go to a university those badges should follow me. And so the open standard will allow us to do that. That they are, that um, these systems will all talk to each other. Um, what, what, what I do know is that um, if you go in to look for badges at badger.io um, any one of those badges can be that um, any badge that can be awarded to a student, that student can join them together, right? Now, a, um, I, what I can do as well is I can say, oh, I know that there's this program going on at the library and I'm in the English department, maybe at another school, but I know what's, you know, I know what's happening there. And so I can create a pathway that uses badges from other sources. And so if they have those, those particular badges combined with my badges, then I can award another badge. And then you can communicate together to create a new badge, basically? Like if you get my meta badge and your meta badge, yes. then you can have to badge that we both have agree upon. It. Yes, that, 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 that can happen. Well, you can actually. It's these the pathways can. I've seen some. I mean, uh, this is mostly a demonstration for. Um, you know, this was a demonstration for faculty at Green River, and then also for the state of Washington. You know, uh, so it's fairly fairly simple. But there are some. Um, let me see if I have any. Can I, can I ask one question? Oh, sure. So how long have you had this at the state level that you been using this and what is the adoption rate at the colleges? Okay. Um, so uh, the adoption rate of the colleges, I don't have the data on that yet. And um, we've had a contract for almost two years. Then we threw the switch on it about a year or so ago. Um, I have this gentleman from Tacoma Community College. How long have you guys been using Badger in your couple of years? Yeah, yeah. And then it was what really, uh, it was sort of like, um, 
instructor said, oh, we're going to put badges in Canvas, and we kind of shrugged our shoulders. And then um, we started hearing more buzz about this. Um, and um, the idea of being able to take um, multiple credentials from other organizations, you know, like Microsoft, um, those badges can be uh, ported into another student's uh, backpack. So that's what they call um, that's what they call this. Is this is my backpack? Oops. Let's see where is it. Oh. Well, so that's what the open standard is is going to do. Is that Credly, Badger, and any uh, remnant um, bolt together systems that still use the open standards? So some common language. Yeah. 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 Um, and so let's see. Um, in and these are the badges that I've gotten. Um, is that a standard only, or is it national? It's uh, supposed to. It's a. Uh, the idea is that it's international. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. So just like uh, they're following the model of open soft software development and and those principles, and that's uh, now in um, uh, what's unclear to people is how those um, how the stand you know how the standards at different colleges are going to mesh together and then the standards at the private sector because it implies a lot of discussions about um, course objectives you know things like that and uh, is there any kind of like regional accreditation kind of concept for that like a larger body that you can look to that would it was that was so so those efforts have gotten really big and and so Mozilla was going to do that and they, and they had a huge department it just got bigger and bigger and then they just said um, okay concentric sky now you do it you know and um, uh, then so then what concentric sky said was that they're going to um, they're going to talk to other players with this, with the idea of open digital badges, um, but I don't think there's going to be uh, a, a single gatekeeper. At least I haven't seen anything on the horizon on that. You know, uh, so I think it'll still have some um, informality to these things in that in that sense. Well, I get familiar with it when I recorded a course at a Commons, and they actually was a community college here in Oregon. On the and they picked up the idea from California. Basically, it's more of a, for professional development. In, you know, when the instructor completes an accessibility course, and that accessibility course, yeah, it had all the outcomes and that what they had to meet. And that was a requirement that on their online instructors had to go through. And ultimately, they were bad, they were bad, they sat underneath. They, I think he even had it on his email. I saw the accessibility bad or something else. But I really like the idea when you're talking about an instructional designer comes to you. I'm an instructional designer. You know, are you the full meal deal or are you good at this? What, is, what does it really mean? And, and so I think in education, I don't, you know, I'm just trying to figure it out because we're trying to do a student orientation. Is it, you know, what's going to mean for that student? They meet these certain objectives. You know, they've got to get this badge when they're done. What's that going to mean a year later to them? Uh, I, I, I don't know how they're going to grasp. It's going to be a motivation thing for them or not. But I think on, on the, for me, I kind of like it when I, when I, I like the idea of a professional development for online instructors or, because that's my area of so like, mm -hmm. you know, is that um, I want my instructors to understand accessibility, universal design. I want to, I mean, that's more than, that's the same thing the instructor designer should bring to me, the, the skills. But really, I like to see my faculty get there. And I, I could see use going that way. Yeah. And then, um, if you, we're not a state, we're not a system in Oregon, so well, it'd be hard to pull 17 and separate islands together and get, get a consensus for how I could do this. But California has a good idea of if you go through an online certification course that passes the Indian Community College, that pretty much means that you've met the standards 
So if you look at that course and you look at Carson State, this person gets a badge for completing this online teaching certification course. He can pretty much teach online at the other community colleges. The concept there. So I, you know, I don't know. Although we are, the only thing that they have left in terms of the college system. Yeah, we're, we're, we're a sort of Gina Island. <laughs> I, tell, I, I do a lot of consortiums. I, I follow what Washington State does. I put many consortiums together in Oregon. From Canvas right now, I'm working on Canvas for different things. Zoom, statewide, we sign the contract. But I like the, you know, we're, we're close. That's an island. Oregon likes islands, I think. Yeah, great. Yeah. Yes, true. So badges are really tied closely to the concept of competencies and education. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. So, are you are you working to change over to like rather course based outcomes or competency based outcomes in the system? Um. I would, we, yeah, that's, that would be uh, up to the individual colleges to do that. Mm -hmm. What we would want to do is that if there was a competency based system, this, the state board would want to make sure that they had the tools available to be successful at that. Um, but, you know, a competency based uh, uh, um, uh, systems, I mean, that's like, that's why I think workforce education has been really. Interesting. I mean, they're training people to work in, um, you know, in like uh, memory care homes, things like that. And there's very specific sets of skills. Other one is um, food service, you know, certification down in California. It was uh, there's lots of um, lots of little trainings that they go through, and um, there was a couple of tacks that they needed to do to get. Um, you know, you have to talk to the health department, of course, you know, make sure that, and then there's uh, accrediting through, um, there's a, another accreditation uh, that they have to go through with helping, I, I can't recall the, the agency, but there's a couple of them in California where they had to go through that in order to do, to, um, do these mini certifications through food services. and. Um, you have the same thing here in Oregon. You have a food handler's card, for instance. You know, and the food handler's card is basically a paper badge, you know. Um, let's see then. Um, there's, uh, um, uh, what, uh, what'll happen today is everyone who attended, if you are, if you are in the, um, SCED system, um, I will, uh, award you a badge for participation that you'll be able to display. Now, it's kind of a funny thing, right? You just got to wear a badge, but what it does though, it allows you to kind of um, link back what we did here today, um, follow the email, um, you know, the link in the email, and um, it'll, it sets you up with a uh, backpack at Badger, and um, you'll be able to um, see how that badge is shared out and the different things that you can do with that. So even though we don't subscribe to Badger, if we have a badge in Badger, we can log in and see it? Uh, well, so it'll ask you to create an account. Okay. Um, yeah. That's the case of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They have a pro service. Yeah. 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 And I put my contact um, information here. Um, I'm, I'll be doing a lot with uh, badges over the next year. Um, I'll be posting uh, this presentation to my blog at jeffkane.com. Um, feel free to talk to me on Twitter if you're a tweeter. And uh, there's my email address. And I would love to uh, find out um, if um, you have uh, any more interest in this or um, would like to learn more about what we're doing at Washington State Board. Have you heard State at all if, if anybody doing in Oregon showing interest or not? If anybody what? If, if, if Oregon is showing interest or not. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Lincoln, Lincoln Community College um, is, is looked at badges. They're actually doing some work with 
Paula, the 